We all know those excursions you can book outside of the ship while on a cruise, right? But did you know that there's one that takes place within the lifelines? Let's take a look. I am talking about the Behind the Fun Tour on Carnival Cruise Lines. It gives you an opportunity to take a tour of the ship and look into some places that you don't normally get to see. Uh, and while this is not a cheap trip, running about $130 per person, uh, it was very interesting in my mind. Uh, with my time on Navy destroyers and seeing how the DOD does it, I gotta say I was always curious to see how the, the commercial operation, uh, you know, measured up. So, uh, so I booked this trip on my last cruise. Uh, now, uh, be aware, this is not a trip for the faint of heart. Uh, it's a two and a half to three hour trip and you're gonna be going up and down ladderways and a lot of standing and walking around. So make sure that uh, that's something you can do. Also, I wouldn't recommend this for your younger people uh, in that it, it kind of goes on for a while and unless you have a, a really strong interest in it, I think they would, they would actually lose their interest and, and probably not be a good trip for them. The actual tour started on the last sea day and we all got together and met, in this case in the piano bar. Uh, there were drinks and, and snacks in there for us to, to kind of entertain ourselves until everybody kind of gathered. Uh, we were assigned a guide and before we started the tour we received this cool little ball cap as well as a, uh, a behind the fun lanyard. I don't know if that was as much for our enjoyment or that they can keep an eye on the people in the tour to know who belonged there and who didn't. Uh, we also had a badge on the end of our lanyard, but they made us give that back at the end of it. So let's get into what we actually saw. The tour started out, we left the piano bar, we meandered away on the ship in a large gaggle, and we went all the way to the front, to the theater. And uh, there we got to actually see behind the stage, so to speak, uh, of the theater. And uh, we had some people there that, that told us about the backdrops they had as well as, as the moving stage portions and just how operations went. We got to see the prop room and they took us back to the dressing room where we got to meet with the uh, entertainment coordinator and, and he told us about his experiences and some of the day-to-day the -day life that, that they go through as, as entertainers on the ship. Very good time. Uh, next we went down to the storage area and I must tell you it is immense. It is a large, large area uh, which you can see here. Uh, and it holds everything that that ship needs during the course of that cruise. Uh, things are forklifted on and carried up and down and, and put in every little nook and cranny. There are coolers, uh, refrigerated and freezers, as well as a lot of storage places. This also has the, uh, the, the dubious honor of storing all the non uh, digestible garbage and trash that, that winds up accumulating on the ship until such a time as debarkation day where they can uh, forklift it off on pallets as well. Uh, the storage area, we got to go in and, and see several of the rooms, including a cooler that had the, uh, the beer and the wine in it. Unfortunately, there were no samples given out during this time. Did you know all the consumables that are brought aboard are all bought in the U.S.? There is nothing picked up in ports uh, as you're underway, though sometimes ships, if they're in the port at the same time, may trade some commodities back and forth. So that's kind of a cool little deal. Uh, we went from there to the main galley and you got to see how all these thousands of meals uh, are delivered in a timely fashion. And it is a, a, it is a, a bustle of hustle. I mean, there's things going on everywhere. There's a, a large line and the servers come through and get all the plates on platters and you see them carrying them out and it is just a non-stop uh, flow. Got to see a, a little more detailed look at, uh, at some of the carvings uh, for the ship. There was a guy there that was doing watermelon art and it was fabulous. And then we went to the dessert area and saw them preparing all the different kind of desserts uh, for the next meal. Unfortunately, there were no samples here either. Well, we saw where the food goes and for us and now the aftermath. They took us to the environmental room and this is where all the trash and garbage on the entire ship is processed and it is sorted and, and ground and compacted and, uh, and packaged and broken down. It just, it's an amazing operation and if you think about it for just a moment, you'll be overwhelmed by the amount of trash and garbage that, that gets generated by the thousands of people on this ship. Uh, it was quite the operation. Uh, one of the things I didn't know, I always just assumed that they took food garbage and ground it up and spit it out into the ocean. Well, that's not quite true, not entirely anyway. They, they put that in a big tank, anything, anything that's edible, uh, and, and you know they grind it into a slurry 
and they mix enzymes and bacteria that break that, that food stuff down. So by the time it does go out in the ocean, it is, it is just uh, as processed as it can be. Uh, it can still provide uh, nourishment for, for all the little creatures out there, uh, but you're not gonna find big chunks of chicken and you will never find a chicken bone going into the ocean from this ship. Uh, we went to the main laundry from here and you may think, oh, the laundry yawn. Uh, but again, just like the trash, imagine how much linen goes through usage during the course of a cruise. You have your, your napkins, your sheets, your towels, uh, just anything cloth wise that, that has to be done is actually done in this facility. And it was massive. There were giant commercial washing machines and, and just bays and bays of commercial dryers. Uh, these guys, they work in a very hot and humid environment. Uh, so, so hats off to them. I mean, they, they do a, a lot of work to make, make things good for us. Uh, did see some interesting technology in the fact that there was a machine that they could take a wet sheet and lay it down. It would pull it inside, dry it, press it, fold it in a matter of seconds. And I guess you have to have stuff like that when you're looking at such a volume of, of uh, material. It was crazy, but it was a very cool place. Did you know they also do dry cleaning down on that deck? So yeah, all the, all the ship's officers, they come down when they have dry cleaning, it goes in there and gets processed and delivered to them. Quite a deal. From there, we jumped out into the I-95 corridor, and this is a big, big wide hallway down on the lower decks, and it pretty much is where the crew gets around the ship. Uh, they, they use it to move luggage on embarkation day. Uh, their supplies get carried around, the people, anything like that. Just, it, it's a, it's a, a thoroughfare of activity. Uh, it's also where a lot of the crew berthing is, as well as the administrative offices. Uh, HR was down there, we'll talk about later. And on the walls everywhere, there are motivational posters and, and uh, schedules and crew activities and things like that. Uh, in fact, there was a large bulletin board that had nothing but, but glowing letters of praise from uh, prior passengers that they had put up for the crew to read. So your comments do get seen. And moving on down I-95, we got to see uh, where the crew quarters were. Uh, we did not actually get to go inside any stateroom and actually, you know, invade these people's spaces. Uh, but we did get to see a presentation at HR that, that showed us what that was like. Uh, we had some other things that went as well as a question and answer uh, period. And uh, did you know that, that crew members are allowed to, uh, to, to you know, have, have little relationships? Uh, not with the passengers, not with the passengers. But you can actually cohabitate in your stateroom uh, with a request and if it works out. And if they decide to move to another ship, they can request to go as a pair and go off there and stay together. Uh, things you didn't know. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, we saw the crew gym and laundry. They have a smaller laundry that they can do and do their own, their own things there, clean their uniforms and clothes and stuff like that. Uh, the gym was very nice. Actually, a lot of stuff uh, you know, packaged into a small space. And I'm sure the crew has a hard time finding a good schedule to get to the gym, uh, but any, any time they have, it's available to them. So it's not hard to stay in shape if you're motivated. And there on the converse side, as far as getting trimmed, there also, we, we had a tour of the crew mess and the staff mess. Uh, and you could get to see the little buffet type of, of place that they had there, as well as some cook to order things. Uh, there were tables set up, uh, a little TV viewing area, and it was very, very nice. Very nice for the crew. We got to see that and move on. And that led us to the crew lounge, and this is a place for them just to go and kick back in the little bit of time that they have off during the day. Most of these people are working 12-hour shifts, and the people I talked to, they, they pretty much said that they don't use the, uh, the lounge very often because if they have time off, they're usually spending it asleep in their rack. Uh, but it was, it was a nice area. There were seats. Uh, there was a, another TV viewing area with couches and such. Uh, there was a bar there and, uh, and, and games like, like ping pong and foosball and uh, you know, pool table, thing like that. So they, they do take care of them there. Uh, we actually got to take a break while we were there at the, at the cruise lounge and uh, they served us uh, additional drinks, juices, and, and some more pastries. So we got to take a load off and kind of recover because it, again, it's a long walk. And from there, it led us down into the more grittier operation of the ship. We went to the engine control room, uh, got to meet with the chief engineer and a, a water uh, purification officer there. 
Uh, you got to see the status of all the all the systems on the ship, the water, the transfers, the fuel level, the engines online, generator, stuff like that. Uh, very, very interesting to see how they maintain that or how they, how they keep that overwatch on that. And uh, though we didn't get to see the engine room itself, uh, they did have several closed circuit television screens that we could actually look and see what the thing looked like. So, so that was good. We got a little bit of a taste of that. And then after that, they took us up to the bridge and that, that's actually very neat because that is the place that they drive the ship. We got to meet the captain and the second officer as well as the, 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 the crew members that were there on watch during that time. Uh, and, and got to see the complete layout. They gave us a demonstration on, on how the ship controls work. They showed us the radars and the pathways. The captain answered all of our questions, was very accommodating. And then at the end, as a bonus, we all got to have our picture taken with the captain. Big group photo there on the bridge. So that was, that was nice. Uh, and that pretty much concluded the tour. We, we went back down and they took us to the Fahrenheit 555 uh, restaurant, at, uh, the steakhouse on board. And uh, we sat down and had, had champagne and some more snacks and just talked about the tour. And, uh, there we got a goodie bag, uh, which really consisted of the goodie bag. It was a, a carnival uh, little tote bag and it had, had some odds and ends in it, your, your captain picture, as well as some literature. There was a wristband, I believe, and, and things like that. So a very good time overall. Uh, is, it, is it worth it? Is it worth the $130? Well, to me it was. I mean, it depends what kind of interest you have in that. I don't know that I would do it again, but I am, I am very, very happy that I went on it one time just to kind of see the stuff. Again, it was about two and a half hours, I think, maybe pushing into three, uh, and a lot of walking, but a lot of cool stuff to be seen. So take a look at it if you like. And until next time, happy cruising. Don't forget the sunscreen.